Hi everyone, welcome once again to the 24-bit podcast and this is the second episode in a series we are doing uh, regarding the upcoming Safaricom Engineering uh, Summit. By the time you get to listen th- to this podcast, maybe it might not be upcoming anymore. Anyway, Decode 2.0 is here and as you'd heard in the first episode, if you haven't listened to it, please just scroll up and you click through to the first episode where we were looking at everything that's to do with the uh, engineering summit but now as with that one we are also joined by a team from the kitchen uh, a team from safaricom and they're going to tell us what they do and how they come in on all of this and i'm your host chance emmanuel and i'm joined by donna reggae i'm head of safaricom women in technology and also senior manager digital it and business yes my name is maureen madenge i'm the hr cluster lead for technology Good, and our next guest is not a stranger to us. She was with us in episode one. Yeah, so I have not changed my outfit, as you can tell from the first episode. <laughs> Still the same. Uh, my name is Naiseja Mungai. I'm the digital delivery lead at Safaricom. I also lead the Safaricom engineering community. Great. Um, Naiseja had some very interesting insights in our first episode regarding uh, the first edition of the summit and now going into the second and we are hoping to get similar, very nice insights from you ladies. So first things first, um, according to you, what do you view as the future of work? And a point to our listeners, and if you're watching this, the future of work is one of the topics that will be tackled at the summit. So if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, you're getting a preview of some of the things that you can expect. So back to my question, what do you view as the future of work? I'll start with you, Maureen, then come to Donna. Okay. Um, I think from a tech perspective, but also from Mm -hmm. a HR perspective, I think one of the things that's going definitely to be in our future Mm -hmm. is automation is going to be big, Mm -hmm. uh, which means that some of the roles that we do today might not be relevant uh, by 2050. I think that's one of the things. Um, But I think the second um, element that we see with the future of work is some of the skill sets that then become critical um, as we prepare for that future. And I think for people working in technology, who already have those future skills, then it becomes the place to be, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And I think some of the things that we've been seeing is, especially with the emergence of AI, there's a lot of things that AI is starting to do for us where we start to ask ourselves, you know, will human beings be required for certain things? (laughs) Um, But also I think um, everything being automated, then software engineering starts to become really big, you know, so... Uh, being able to automate a lot of our processes, but using our software engineering skill sets to be able to do that. Um, I think the other thing that we've seen is we're starting to go um, cloud almost on everything. And as soon as you go cloud, then you find that there are things that we do within organizations that become standardized. Um, and we start to rely on just not you know how we do things locally, but also what I, what's the global scene doing, right? I think the other thing that we've seen is um, we're moving away from driving certifications uh, in my time and I will not say when I was born <laughs> <laughs> you may assume I'm really young <laughs> I pray I look young mm-hmm. um, but I think when we were growing up one of the things that we were pushed to do all the time is get this certificate for this you know get this degree for that um, but we're realizing that when it comes to the future that it's not about how many certificates I'm carrying but it's um, what am I able to do with the skills that I have and we've seen um, a lot of uh, young people, a lot of our future employees, um, not just driving certification, but they go ahead and really look for the work experience, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And if I have a really amazing software engineer, it will not be how many certificates do they have. It's, mm-hmm. you know, what, what have you really developed? Um, what can you show um, in terms of, you know, your craft mm-hmm. that you've actually applied, right? Mm-hmm. So we're starting to move away from just driving certification to driving experiences and outcomes. Um, And that's also shifted us from a HR standpoint from um, just asking people, you know, questions in an interview to actually requesting that they show us what they can do. And there's some amazing things that the tech team has been doing, you know, driving um, sessions where you can actually see how people are coding and, and things like that, hackathons and all of that. Because then those will show you the actual skill set. Mm-hmm. I could go on and on about future. 
Um, because I think it's the one thing that we were not prepared for, but I think COVID forced us to go really quickly there. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are many things that we're seeing that are starting to become big shifts uh, when it comes to skill set, but also how we work and what employers are really looking for. I'll, I'll stick with you. Uh, you've, you've talked about moving away from certifications to driving experiences and outcomes. I know uh, you are all at Safaricom. You are HR lead cluster for technology. That's correct. Now, beyond, do you see what you've said applying outside like the tech industry as well? It's, it's starting to, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, and in my background, I've worked for a number of organizations. So I have, I've had the opportunity to work for tech organizations. I've worked for a government institution. Um, it was a quasi government. And even in that last experience in the quasi government, I started to see um, us looking for experience as opposed to certification. Uh, one of the things that became really massive was we had so much data um, in the organization I was working for, and we wanted to do something with that data. And to be able to do that, we needed people who have really um, ingrained skill set in data scientists, data analysts, right? Um, and what we were looking for is people who could come in and help us to build a data warehouse, but also um, go beyond building the data warehouse and data lake to actually pulling out the data and making, um, in making, drawing insights out of it, right? Um, now, what we realized was if we went the certification route, we were ending up with so many applicants. Mm-hmm. Um, but the one thing that we did differently was we actually gave them a task for a couple of days. Um, so if you were shortlisted, you had to come in and actually showcase how you use your skill set. And that changed the dynamic on who we actually ended up hiring, right? Um, so I don't think it's just in Safaricom. I think the industry is moving that way because people have realized that they hire you to come and do the work and not necessarily for the qualifications you carry. So you want, by the time you're hiring somebody, that from the onset, from the time they come in, um, they're actually able to immediately start to add value. And the only way you can confirm that is by putting them through almost like... Um, how can I call it, like a makeshift environment where they show you how they would do it in a real life situation, right? Mm-hmm. So the there is a big shift, um, not just, I think, in Safaricom or tech organizations, but also non-tech are starting to look for value as opposed to um, certification and promises. Good. Uh, before I come to Dawn, I'll go to Nasenya. At the summit, are you giving us an opportunity to see uh, how these experiences and outcomes can be showcased by talent instead of, you know, the old school way I I come, I have a very padded CV and lots of certificates attached to it. The summit is a place to showcase what, if somebody is listening to this and they wish to come to the summit, what can they expect to see along those lines? So I think the most interesting thing, the problem is every time I listen to Maureen, I'm mm. always like, mm, <laughs> I'm going to use this in somewhere. <laughs> so I'm just, I've had your question, but I'm just looking at, ah, yo kitu enye Maureen amesema ninaenda kutumia wapi. Anyway, so we are going to have a booth. Uh, mm-hmm. The HR team mm-hmm. from Safaricom are going to have a booth. Mm-hmm. So some of the things that Maureen has actually mentioned mm-hmm. will be showcased at the booth. Mm-hmm. And like I mentioned earlier in the first episode, we are also launching the industry digital talent pool because mm-hmm. it's our way to showcase what the future is because whatever the platform is supposed to do is very really different from how things are currently being run in the industry. So if you have a very thick padded CV, mm-hmm. please just come with it and then <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and to you, Donna, what are some of the trends that you see uh, influencing work uh, in years to come that already they've started and we're going to see more of in years to come? So I think um, in those lines, for me, it would be, I think, post, post the pandemic, mm-hmm. seeing a lot of remote working. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a great influence in terms of um, what the future of work will look like. And um, you'll notice that most of the conversations I have is biased towards women. Mm-hmm. So I think for me, the future of work looks like it's going to favor women a great deal. Mm-hmm. And why I say this is because, one, um, a lot of uh, the roles going forward also 
um, tend to be solution oriented, so like technology for good. Mm -hmm. So this I think favors uh, women favorably because women, I believe in the society, we interact a lot on a day to day and we notice all these problems around us in our family setup in our communities and <coughs> we're always looking for a solution i think a woman came up with a microwave before even the microwave was formed when you tell a woman to warm rice women took rice poured in water and warmed it we didn't know about microwaves then so i think a woman is very solution oriented and i believe that technology is now coming to a space where we will see more women coming in because technology can now accommodate them to be able to be a bit more solution oriented with a lot of the, the <coughs> software engineering roles and things like that then also, I think the fact that now technology has started infusing arts mm -hmm. in it. So now it's no longer just STEM, it's STEAM. Mm -hmm. So uh, you notice a lot of the careers that are, let me say, new age or digital skills have an infusion of arts. So this is also very welcoming and accommodating to the ladies. So this is also something that we see into the future of work um, as it evolves. So these, I think, are the things like UI, UX. Mm -hmm. It involves, it involves a greatly a big, a big part of um, the arts bit. And then I think also just uh, the fact that the trend where now learning is no longer cl classroom learning. So now we have remote learning. I mm. think for me this favor is favorable to the future of work because one, it accommodates everyone, especially like the women. Women was, have always had less opportunity because you have to take care of the family, you have to go back home, you have to do a lot of things. Now you can even learn at the comfort of your home. So this I think will greatly also influence um, the future of work as we see it. Interesting. Very nice insights. For me, I have one very nice takeaway we're moving from just STEM to STEAM. STEAM. And I think that can be reflected. We, uh, we've been told in the first episode of this podcast series we're doing for the summit yes. that this year is not just engineering. They also bring in creatives mm. yes. to, the, yes. to the mix. Mm -hmm. I'll stick with you, Donna. <coughs> uh, now, you've talked about women uh, and you are the head of the Women in Technology at Safaricom. Yes. Now, what are some of the trends you are seeing with regards to Safaricom's efforts towards uh, increasing its diversity and being more inclusive? I remember we used to come for press briefings by when the late Bob Collum was around. And yes. he, he, every other time, we will have this emphasis that this last year we had this number of women, this year we've grown to this number of women. So how is that progressing? Because um, our understanding from the first podcast that we did was Safaricom has transitioned from being a telecommunications company to a technology company. So now fully this space, if you're talking about women in technology, you guys should be leading from the front. So how is it looking like if you're assuming you guys are at the front? So before even we get there, first of all, you should be clapping very hard. You have an all women's panel. It's not very easy to get into <laughs> technology company. You should be heko na shangwe kabisa. So <clears throat> from, a, from a Safaricom or an organization perspective, I mm -hmm. think um, we may have lost our CEO, God rest his soul in peace, mm -hmm. but the efforts did not di die with him. I think he planted a very, very, um, let me say what, fruitful seed and it's mm -hmm. growing. Mm -hmm. um, so other than um, the fact that um, we said that 8% when we formed women in tech, mm -hmm. they're now at 24%. Wow. We might that's have times seen that, three. That's times three mm -hmm. in a span of about 10 years. The growth might have slowed down slowly during the pandemic, but again, as I said, everything was affected during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, but we are quickly picking up. So one of the things that I think has been a big milestone for us over this period was been just during the pandemic, we were at zero percent women in leadership in mm -hmm. technology. Mm -hmm. Now we are at twenty eight percent. So that's a big shift, and I think this has take has been taken greatly from intentional leadership from not only within technology division, but mm -hmm. also the company um, as a whole. So the HR uh, point of view and even the greater uh, executive committee. So I think uh, leadership sponsorship is great for such initiatives to be able to prosper. And then also I think from a HR perspective, we have a very intentional HR in, ter in terms of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So other than forming support groups like Women in Technology to support um, and create a pipeline of women who can then be hired within the technology space, and then we can um, incubate them to be able to grow into leadership. Mm -hmm. We also have other programs like Women in Business. So this one is basically to promote women who are trying to uh, pursue tech business within the technology space. So our business is also trying to be very realistic about our ecosystem. Then other than that, then we're also trying to see, are there any partners we are working with out there also who then support uh, like uh, PWDs and all that. So we also bought internship through PWDs. So I can be, I believe our efforts are still targeted and are growing at a, a very great rate. We have a target of 30% mm -hmm. by 2030 and for the ladies in technology, so 24 to 30, and we believe we'll get there. For the leadership, by 2025, we're looking at 50%, and Maureen just assured me that we are about to get there, so... 
we shall be hitting it and celebrating um very 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 soon so i think also other than that the fact that when we started women in tech it's a voluntary uh, initiative mm-hmm. it is not part of the organization but it's a group of ladies who dedicate their time and energy to ensuring that we can be able to meet uh, this gap and be able to elevate ourselves in terms of the technology um, space so this again adds to the drive i think anything you do with passion anything brings an additional level of dedication and commitment so other than <coughs> us being like we're ticking the box it's a KPI for us it's something a way of life it's something we have owned we have absorbed and it's easy to then walk the talk so this is some of the things that I would at times share with other organizations and say it's not a matter of just saying we are DNI incorporated or inclusive and stuff are you owning it is it a culture is it a way of life is have you made it part of your business to be able to uh, to endeavor to grow it uh, before i leave you i'll ask you one final question follow up how now you've talked about what you're doing internally as a how is that energy being infected to other organizations you work with you've talked about the women in business which is nice but now how are you carrying this dna away from safaricom because safaricom has so many suppliers so many partners how are they plugging in into this and because all of them are still in the same industry they're technology companies true so it's good you asked that question so we have a lot of um best practice sharing sessions with mm-hmm. other organizations in this case i would even refer to the one that we're having a meeting next week with ca actually mm-hmm. they're actually starting an um, an initiative with around women in tech and they've actually come to as a as a, a company that has owned it and grown and actually matured in it they're coming to be, be able to share uh, knowledge from our end and give us their perspective perspective as one of our authorities on what they see within the industry then within our partner ecosystem we also push our partners other than giving us business in terms of um, revenue and uh, anything uh, purchase oriented we push you to ensure you are partnering with us in events like decode in events like women in tech so um you'll notice during the decode summit we'll be launching uh, an initiative we're doing with Huawei mm-hmm. around women in tech so they also have a women in tech we have a women in tech so what we do some of the activities together so you, you see us showcasing that we'll also see a company called fireside who also has uh, one of mm-hmm. our smaller partners but also supporting a lot of activities around women and technology especially trainings you'll also see them doing the event when we'll partner with them for the one of the hackathons during um the event so for sure yes we're taking the energy away we share knowledge we partner we actually even at times borrow uh, some things and also at times we go out to also give uh, to the communities around us interesting fireside are they contractors for home fiber yes yes yes, yes. yes. i think yes. one of the last podcasts we've done that's been published has been on home fiber and i think oh, nice. yeah the fireside cofon is one of the pioneers in tech spaces in the country when right rebecca she yeah, used to be a journalist yeah. on tech yeah yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, yes so when you were starting out rebecca was one of those people you would look up to ah, interesting okay. i'll come to you maureen uh what does tech talent look like in kenya uh, today Um I I must admit that we've made significant progress in tech talent mm-hmm. and one of the things that um Kenya is starting to pride itself in is the level of tech talent we have right and that's why we have so many organizations that are comfortable to come and set up base here I think Google is one of them uh, Microsoft was another and and you can see there's a reason as to why they would want to come to Kenya as a hub Um I think Africa in general is definitely shifting the dial when it comes to tech talent and we've seen countries like uh, Nigeria where for sure if you want to find um really strong software engineering talent you can find it there we're seeing Cairo doing the same mm-hmm. um but I think um Kenya is not lagging behind in terms of ensuring that we have a very good population of uh, future skills right and and the future skills that we're starting to see coming from Kenya is um cybersecurity definitely software engineering we have a bit of cloud experts as well i think coming from this region as well um data analytics is also becoming big for us they're not as many as we want them to be and so there's a war for talent in in Kenya right now we keep <laughs> picking from each other but you can see there's definitely an aggressive effort in in a lot of the different tracks for for tech talent good you preempted my next question <laughs> yeah. when, you, when you talked about the the talent was yeah uh, i'm going to ask number one yeah. what's been like your 
observation you know mm. your key when it comes to hr at safaricom yeah. what's been your observation like as an expert as a professional in the yeah. field uh, that's number one mm-hmm. and then number two how is this affecting your operations for instance your safaricom and see, you're seeing all your developers going to microsoft <laughs> or uh, aws yeah uh, how 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 are you navigating around that okay Um, I don't know how Nesanya selected you to be our panel lead today. <laughs> 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 don't know what her criteria was, but we'll have a conversation <laughs> after this. Um, uh, for sure, we uh, we can see the struggles different organizations are having. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think there's something Nesanya said earlier that I want to tap into, and that's how we're going about building industry talent. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. the war for talent is not because we don't have really good talent in Kenya. I think what we're lacking is experienced talent, you know. So everybody wants um an engineer today who can deliver today. Mm-hmm. And that one who can deliver today has experience. Mm-hmm. Um so if you look at the war for talent right now, it's more on the mid and senior level. You know, people who already have earned their stripes, they've got that three to five years experience. Um but hardly are we fighting for the entry level because for sure if you have an entry level engineer you have to invest you have mm-hmm. to invest in uh, making sure you give them time to deliver on what you need them to deliver on um you have to provide the right opportunities for them you have to manage them differently right they're not as independent as somebody who's middle senior mm-hmm. um so the war is coming in because um every business is being driven by delivery today because it has a direct impact on um revenue generation and speed to market and getting customers out to product i mean products out to customers mm-hmm. so everybody is rushing to say i need somebody who's experienced because they'll be quicker in delivery um so we're all ending up in the same war zone where this person is experienced and can deliver today as opposed to i may need to invest in somebody who doesn't have the experience now where safaricom has changed the dial on this is we're not afraid of taking people who are inexperienced and we've been doing that through our um, graduate management program where we get in tech talent and we are more than happy to invest in giving them projects that give them the experience and giving them managers who can work closely with them to ensure they gain the experience i think the second thing that we've done that's different from possibly the industry is doing is have, having a very robust software factory where uh, we know for sure we need the talent but we need it in numbers because If I'm inexperienced, it will take me longer to give you the product you're looking for, but if I have three of you, it will give me the opportunity for the three of you to possibly deliver at the same speed as somebody who's experienced, right? So we are willing to invest in our inexperienced engineers, have a lot more of them, give them the right opportunities, build that talent, um and at the same time enable the business delivery. Um the what we're doing differently as well is to say fine we don't have experienced engineers but we are happy to enable you to get certification um give you a platform where you can come in and put in your and show us your skill set and allow the industry to also give you experience and that's where the industry um talent comes in um because what we've realized is we're not going to win in this war i think <laughs> <laughs> we can keep <laughs> we can keep fighting for the mm-hmm. talent but i think it's a losing battle for all organizations so mm-hmm. i think if we all had concerted efforts within within kenya to say fine we don't have enough of them but can we take in 10 this year give them the experience and get them back into the industry then that definitely would be a win win Um so yes the war for talent is there yeah I would prefer not to f- be fighting for talent <laughs> <laughs> for sure but at least there are things that we're doing just to enable not just us but I think also the industry to have the right uh, level of talent thank you uh nice I'm coming to you yeah. to add to what Maureen has said mm-hmm. there is something that our CHRO likes to say mm-hmm. in the war against talent mm-hmm. talent has won Mm-hmm. not safaricom not yeah. google not yeah. microsoft mm-hmm. and i am saying this from a point of uh when i started my career at safaricom i always crack this joke mm-hmm. uh when i first got my paycheck and it was written i think psychological safety it was written 108000 and i was like ha huh? next week ninaenda kununua nyumba karen <laughs> <laughs> because uh, <laughs> it was so much money yeah. i didn't know what to do with it mm-hmm. 
and uh, in 2020 during COVID, uh, digital IT had an attrition rate of 23%. Yes, did we lose our talent to Microsoft, to Google? Yes, we did. But part of the many programs that Safaricom has introduced, including the Safaricom Engineering Summit, is to ensure... You've seen my MacBook, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Wow. And, and wow. If you are listening, wow. if you are listening for context, uh, she has one of those very nice M1 Pros that we discussed a while back on the podcast. Yeah. So, so we've been very intentional to equip developers with what they need for them to give their best work mm. so and all this it's not necessarily small things because mm. uh we safaricom has invested a lot of money a lot of effort we've done um research uh against what uh the big techs are doing mm -hmm. and our attrition rate has actually last year our attrition rate was less than 6.8 percent mm. wow. so we are very intentional in creating an environment for the developers to actually thrive. That's in across the organization or digital IT? In technology. Ah, nice, yes, nice, yes. nice. Ah, okay. Uh, you've touched and, on... And I, keep, and I keep feeding off each other, so allow <laughs> us <laughs> <laughs> to feed off each other. But uh, I, I think the, the other thing, um, just borrowing from what Naisanya was saying, mm -hmm. that is definitely um, a selling point, I think, for tech talent in to come to work for Safaricom or working in Safaricom is the type of work they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I've spoken to tech talent working in different organizations. And I think the difference that we have is when we hire you to come and do software engineering, you actually do proper projects that utilize your skill set. Um, if we hire you to come in and be a data scientist, we definitely don't make you an analyst. You know, We make you a proper data scientist, right? And for people who are tech talent, they're always looking for, don't just give me work and label it, mm -hmm. actually give me work where I can grow my craft. You know, um, And that's the one thing that if you speak to tech talent within our organization, they'll tell you, that when we hire them and we give them the roles, the projects that they are put in enable them to actually grow and it's in line with the skill that they have, mm. you know? Um, and I will not name other organizations that are doing it differently. <laughs> <because> <laughs> <they're many. laughs> you, go na you go and offer and then mm. people come into the role and they're like, but hang on, <laughs> you know? So I think uh, in addition to what Nai has said, I think that's definitely one of our great value propositions. I wasn't going to ask this, but now that you <laughs> brought that up, and those who are listening, I think some people in certain circles know what kind of organizations those are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, the, the question I'm going to ask is, and because it's a question that comes, uh, shows up on my Twitter feed, there is a tech side of Twitter, which comprises lots of the young developers who are in your, in your payroll and yeah. all of those people. One of the question that keeps coming, and it's, this is usually directed at some other companies, still within the industry uh how those you've said developers will come in and they'll do actual software engineering work and all mm -hmm. that if you to come address code uh -huh. <laughs> how do you tackle that your hr so hey, let that me matters. tell you yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> again revealing my age here mm -hmm. um you know i think and i've been i've been in safaricom left and came back mm -hmm. right and the the team that i left two years, three years ago mm -hmm. that I came back to is very different. One, there's, a, there's an organization that's grown, especially on the IT side, because like you rightfully said, we're moving away from just being a telco to a tech co. Um, and therefore we have a lot of young IT talent in place, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if the viewers can see how I'm dressed. I'm overdressed for this organization, like really overdressed, you know? <laughs> um, and, and having come back, having come from a very formal work environment and mm -hmm. coming back in, I honestly had some sleepless nights in what I would see in the office, you know? <laughs> and I think it's just to say that um, we encourage people to be who they are. So we don't necessarily push you to dress in a certain way. I think... Um, creativity is enabled even in how you're allowed to show up, right? Um, and I've been in meetings where I honestly have seen the young tech talent um, wearing the most comfortable jeans or slackwear, you know, like they are just comfortable in their own skin. Um, but when you look at what they're able to do, you actually put aside um, just the view on how they look, you know? Um, 
and and for me especially in HR it's forced this shift uh, where you know we are very driven by dress code and um how people appear to moving away and nice staring at me because it's true <laughs> um to actually allowing people to just be themselves yes. and give you the outcomes that you really desire you mm. know uh myself I've not been able to drop the suits I honestly haven't <laughs> uh, and trying. the team knows <laughs> the most I've done is a <laughs> pair of heels and jeans on a Friday <laughs> um but I think th- truly I think the the diversity is being encouraged and enabled even in how people just feel comfortable to be themselves in the work environment and that's also from a dress code perspective okay uh, maybe let me to feed off what uh, Maureen has said i mm-hmm. think i would ask nisenya to talk about our great culture because i think it plays a big part mm-hmm. also in terms of I'm all years. our developers <laughs> <laughs> so uh i think uh the most interesting thing that i've noted uh in my many many years as a engineer in Safari Corp it's not many it's just seven uh, <laughs> is i have seen the shift uh, when i started my career as a network engineer uh, in the network team uh, initially we oh, it's we would cuz i used to be in the field so i would dress up in jeans and t-shirt and just go to the office actually drive my double cab whatever and then moving to IT it's a bit a younger generation so when the first time i joined and then i'm finding guys with hoodies and kofias and dreadlocks and tattoos siju and crop tops i'm like allah what is <laughs> happening like <laughs> I, it took me a bit to adjust uh, but i can say safari com uh, especially the tech space encourages uh authenticity i think most people think i've just put on this and the beads uh for this but donna will tell you i've been dressed like this the entire day yeah. <coughs> if you're extra like me just you're allowed to be as extra as humanly possible uh we encourage uh a space where everyone is free to express who they are and as donna was mentioning we have a very vibrant digital IT spirit team uh, that actually focuses on how are you bringing your best self to work so there is no at your best self when you are at home or when you're with your friends the person that you are in e- in all these other spaces we encourage you to be that because what we do in the digital IT spirit team we also currently are working on the technology spirit team we are calling it tech ignite mm-hmm. the ladies seated on this table are part of it <laughs> <laughs> so uh we have uh, around five pillars uh one of them is uh innovation so how do we change the innovation culture from it being an event where we are just hosting hackathons to it being a cal- an everyday thing so we encourage the team to uh, experiment on new ideas without uh, thinking that if you make a change you're going to be punished or someone will do something that uh, will hinder the innovative spirit that you have we have a pillar on languages and symbols what george was saying about how do we tell our stories as technology uh, because we found that techies would very much prefer to build amazing products and then when it comes to uh how they built the stories we mostly allow other people to tell our stories but now we are embracing it because as safaricom is becoming a technology company all these products are, are actually built by techies so we are at the forefront of telling our stories the challenges that we faced as developers and all the innovative things that safaricom will be putting out the technology team will be the ones telling the actual stories and then we have forever learning mm-hmm. as a mindset that we have embraced uh, i keep referring to our chro because he likes giving this analogy of a star a star bus driver and <laughs> an uber driver so a star bus driver maybe uh, on kangemi route atakuwa kangemi route for like 10 years right and an uber driver at a atazunguka Nairobi yote 
like atajo all the different routes so for us what we are embracing ni what Maureen was referring to learning agility to learn as many skills as possi- as you possibly can because even what we were what we are currently calling the 10 in demand skill sets skin software engineering all these things they have now completely changed now we have cg prompt engineering mm-hmm. digital twin all these things that but i'm missing you nini nini but if you're watching this episode after decode kindly note even some <laughs> of the programs <laughs> and the topics i used yeah. chat gpt to come up with it <laughs> so how do we uh, how do we enable uh, our techies to continuously learn and we have the digital academy where our guys go and upskill uh, i was part of the first cohort uh, thanks to morina the hr team so forever learning is a spirit that we have actually embedded and uh, the other key thing how do we embrace gamification because we believe uh, the young talent that we have the average age in digital it is around 28 years old so we have a program under the safaricom engineering community uh, called buni.io by mm-hmm. Saf- uh, by safaricom so how we are trying to do what we are trying to do is how do we gamify learning hackathon so that it's a competitive continuous process so as you can tell i'm very passionate about spirit yeah <laughs> uh, yeah and, <laughs> and, 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 talk about it. <laughs> and thanks to you we've gotten a very nice glimpse of that culture and also it's very nice to hear it uh, broken down like that because a lot of those beats have existed within safaricom for so long as we are safaricom watchers here yes. for a long <laughs> yes. while yeah. but to hear them packaged all of that nicely is good and prompt engineering when she was answering my first question morin uh, my first question and saying the future about skills and everything prompt engineering is one of those things like yes. is in demand mm-hmm. and just a few days ago um, openai released the vision part of chat gpt yes, so yeah. now you can just show it things and it will tell you yeah. what that is but then that's an extra skill set you mm-hmm. can't just go to chat gpt and gives you the titles for the yeah. various days of the mm-hmm. summit right mm-hmm. so you need to know now i'm going to ask you a final question all of you then we get your closing remarks time based or delivery based time based or delivery delivery based morin wow that's why would you ask it like that? <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> time based or delivery based the, the reason i'm battling with it is <laughs> if i may and najo utajifunga and your people will watch this i'm like what the reason i'm battling with it is because um mm-hmm. i think we are in a world today where everything has to be delivered mm-hmm. in a certain time mm-hmm. delivery based for me when i think of it it's more like you know what type of quality do you give it's not just about get, giving something mm-hmm. yeah. it has to be mm-hmm. of quality as well mm-hmm. yeah. and yet the two sometimes don't go together mm-hmm. so it's almost like you're pushing me to say do i want it delivered on time or do i want it delivered in good quality mm-hmm. so i'm struggling with that <laughs> Um but if I was to pick it from a business stand- standpoint mm-hmm. I think right now with the way we work we're working in in an agile way and agile is allowing us to be more time based mm-hmm. than just mm-hmm. delivery so I'd go with time mm-hmm. um because I know with agile I can keep doing iterations but as long as I keep giving my customer which could be an internal customer or an external customer mm-hmm. as long as i keep giving them a minimal viable product mm. you know i can go time and then with many iterations i can do quality um so i've <laughs> tried to justify my <laughs> rationale she has um you've coffee and you are time <laughs> okay donna time based time based <laughs> yes. okay closing so, remarks i think for me yeah but chat on it maybe why i have said delivery based yeah. and morin knows this mm. is because i am a perfectionist mm. i do not allow myself to give any output that i cannot justify or back up and also because i think working in the digital it mm-hmm. table and technology excellence is what is expected of us so you would rather give feedback and 
state where a breakdown has mm-hmm. occurred. Uh, and then you're like, can we review the timeline so that I can give out my best work? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. We'll start with you. Your, fi- <laughs> your final remarks. My final remarks. Mm-hmm. Uh, AI is not taking anyone's job. Mm-hmm. Uh, Are you ha- sure? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Since this is the future of work uh-huh. panel, mm-hmm. AI is not taking anyone's work. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need to find a way to incorporate AI in everything that we do. It's supposed to, the same way when calculators came about and people thought we are not going to need accountants, Mm -hmm. it's the same way now AI has come. And imagine you as a software engineer, data scientist, all all these other skill sets, you will use AI the same way we are currently using calculators. Mm -hmm. So how do you embed your knowledge on AI to make you the best software engineer the world has ever seen. Mm. Yes. If if you use AI to do something that Maureen is paying you to do in eight hours, you do it in one hour. Will Maureen still pay you for eight hours? Uh uh-uh. So oh. <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you. There is this thing on LinkedIn. Mm. People will know LinkedIn is my favorite social media platform. Yeah. There is this thing on LinkedIn. Uh, someone. It's a, it was a ship. Mm-hmm. Uh, it had been on the yard for like several months, mm-hmm. no one knew what was wrong. And then they called someone, Akenda Kagonga, and then Akasot, whatever they, Akagonga took place, and then the issue was actually resolved. So, and then the guy was like, so I'm going to pay you X, X amount of money because you've sorted it in five minutes. And then Akamwambia, you're not paying me for the five minutes, you're paying me for the 25 years that I have learned how to resolve this issue. Sour. Maureen, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, I think my closing remarks would be for starters to encourage people just to be who they are. Mm. You know, um, I know we've pushed a lot about what the future looks like, some of the skills that we'll see. But I think at the end of the day, um, I have to own who I am. So what am I most comfortable in? What do I really, really enjoy to do? Um, but make sure that you do it extremely well. Mm. Um, better than anybody else. And then the other thing that I've seen that um, I would want to encourage everyone to do is not to get too comfortable, you know. Mm -hmm. If you've acquired a skill today, it might not be relevant tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So how do you make sure you keep refreshing yourself, you keep remaining up to date, you keep experimenting, trying, you know, um, to to keep yourself refreshed but also to remain relevant. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's moved away from just being back in a classroom, to how many uh, opportunities can you use to gain knowledge? And I think Decode is one of them where you come into a community with other people and you learn from them and you listen in and you sharpen yourself, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I always refer to this example where I met some young people who had never been to a school on cybersecurity, but yet if I had the opportunity, I would have hired them on the go because of the things they were able to do. Um, and I recall bringing them to Safaricom to speak to people who had never done tech to encourage people to take up tech. And I'm telling you, they were young. I mean, they were 14, 13 thereabouts, um, but they had self learned on cybersecurity. And if I had a choice, I would have hired them as ethical hackers because of what they were able to do. So I think just that um, hunger for learning um, <coughs> and learning, relearning, you know, I think that's the one thing that I would say that we all need to own and just, just be yourself. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Dona? Um, before I give my closing remarks, I think um, the, the fact that they were all explaining their choices, I think mm. mine is time-based because I've learned to accept that every in everyone's life, there are seasons of life. Mm. And for me, it's a great learning because with every season of life, self-awareness is key. Mm-hmm. And we lose sight of that each and every day. And I think it leads us to not be at our best because of that. So to my closing remarks, the things I call the two C's, the two A's. Mm-hmm. So courage, for me, I think the youth, the people out there have the courage to be able to let yourself explore, have the courage to be able to learn more about yourself, be self-aware, so that you, you allow yourself to thrive. The other C is curious. As just what Maureen has said, be curious, continue learning, allowing yourself, because Technology is dynamic. Mm-hmm. Allow yourself to be in the moment, to be able to learn, to, di- to evolve with it as it goes. And the two A's. So agility, again, mm-hmm. what Maureen said, 
So just the point where are you willing to change? Are you adaptable to change? Because that kind of mindset will be able to enable you thrive in these seasons of life currently, especially as we go through digital transformation. And then lastly, authenticity, again, to what Maureen said. So I believe um, throughout my career, uh, it's been a bit long. In Safaricom, I've been here over 10 years. And I think I am where I am today because of being me. So authenticity, being yourself. You never know who's watching. Your next growth, your next opportunity may just be the person who watched you do your previous activity. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, those have been very interesting insights. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing. And if you're listening to this, these are some of the things you can get to hear in person at the upcoming Safaricom Engineering Summit. And if you're listening to this long after the summit, well, I hope you picked a thing or two and you learned from these great minds that we've had on the panel. I've been your host, James Emmanuel. Thank you and see you next time. See you. See you. See you. See you.